So thank you all for coming. I'm excited to be here. It's my first trip to Texas, actually, ever. Um, so I'm very excited to be here. My wife and I have been watching Friday Night Lights, although people tell me, people tell me that, that, that I shouldn't take that as a uh, typical uh, representation of, of Texas. So I'm, I'm happy to be here to, to <laughs> is it? OK. Well, I'm here to learn, learn a little bit about it for myself. So. Um, I'm very excited to be here for this workshop. Let me give you a sense of what I'd like to do and how I'd like to allocate our time over the next couple of hours that we have together. This is um, what I have in mind for the agenda. Um, and I'll actually, while we're talking about the agenda, I'll just point your uh, attention toward the handout in your packet that actually details this agenda. Um, and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, go through an overview of some various different options. So, you know, one of the things that people often think is, well, I've got to launch a site. I've got to launch my site. But actually, what I'd like to encourage you to think about is not simply having a single site, a single destination, but actually thinking about multiple ways of having a presence online. So we're not going to talk about the extended um, dimensions of that, which include having a robust presence on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and so forth. We're going to focus specifically on your personal professional presence um, but I am going to present to you a few options that go beyond just the WordPress site that we're going to focus on in the latter half of the section. So initially, I'll present to you um, what you see on uh, another one of the handouts that, that I've included for you, which is nine ways to build your site. So we're going to focus primarily on WordPress because that's the most powerful and the most robust way to present yourself online. But I'm also going to introduce you uh, to some of these other options because they're not mutually exclusive. And for many people, for many purposes, it's actually helpful to have, for instance, a flavors.me page or an about.me page. And we'll come back and talk about what that is and why that's important in a few minutes. Um, uh, the second part of this uh, workshop, we're going to talk specifically about WordPress and some best practices in using WordPress. I'm very pleased to have a couple of uh, helpers here to, to help work with you guys individually because after we talk about WordPress and give you an overview, we're going to focus on actually putting some, some stuff online. So that'll be the third section. And then finally, we'll look at uh, what we've done, and we'll also look at some other professional sites and other uh, sites that journalists have put together to get a sense of where we're at and where others are at and where we can go next. Okay, So that's the general overview of where we're headed. Any questions about that agenda or what we're planning to do today? You all in the right place? Is this where you, where you want to be? If not, Is, feel free to, to run away. and. Let me ask you this. I uh, yes. brought my flash drive with me and put everything on it, like the Great. instructions, yep. and then, of course, I lost it. Okay. So uh, is this going to be a waste of time? Without it's not going to be a waste of time. You won't be able to get maybe as far unless you can retrieve those materials again, if they're online somewhere that okay. you can retrieve them in a Dropbox or something like that. Um, if not, you can go through and do part of what we're, okay. we're going to do. And you may not be able to get your site as, fur as far along as you'd like right now today, but that's OK. You'll still get a sense of it, and you can go back and do it. And you know, I should say, in a couple hours, we're not going to get you to the point where you, know, you ultimately want to be. Right? We're going to get you a couple steps along the way and give you some momentum to move forward from there. Okay? And some resources, more importantly, to help you get along to that, to that next step. Okay? So um, uh, briefly, I'd just like to get a sense of who you all are. And then I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. And I want, in fact, these introductions to be extremely brief. I've seen some of these sessions where people will start talking about their childhood. I'm not interested in spending too much time on that, although I'm sure all of us have fascinating backstories. But just a sentence about you know, who you are, where you're from, and what your objective is. So, and, and that should have two halves, what your objective specifically right now this afternoon is, and then overall, what, what are you trying to do online? Um, does that make sense? So just who you are, you know, where you're coming from, and uh, what your objective is, the big objective overall and the smaller objective just for today. make these things go together mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure if I did my blog, set it up the right way. I was uh -huh. interested in the widgets and all the things that you mentioned that Great. you could help us figure out. Great. Uh, my name is Randy Diamond. I live in San Francisco. I work for uh, Pensions and Investments Magazine full time and I also have an avid interest in travel and I have a travel blog on daily finance called Travel Maze and I'm looking to um, figure out how to brand myself, particularly in terms of... Here's me writing personal histories, and so I have a website. Now, 
also have a blog. You put the blog on there, and then you can get a time with that. Great. Great. Okay, great. You guys are nice and concise. Thank you. So um, I'll just tell you very briefly about myself. I'm a business and technology journalist um, by background. I worked at Time Magazine for a long time. Still write for Time, but now I'm focused around teaching. Um, but when I was at Time full-time, I was writing about um, all sorts of different kinds of things. Um, Google, Yahoo, AOL, Apple, those kinds of companies, as well as some kind of um, cultural trends, new things that people were doing, um, interesting and strange things happening. Uh, around our country and um, occasionally writing straight business stories um, and breaking news stories as well. Um, I really liked writing uh, stories about aspects of our culture and business that I thought were kind of underreported or underappreciated. Um, this is just one example um, I wrote about a um, practice that's um, increasingly popular among retailers of using smell to decorate their stores. So much as they used Muzak uh, and still do use Muzak um, to generate, you know, sort of pleasant-seeming sounds in stores to encourage people to to behave um, in a certain way. Um, they're now using smells to do so as well. So this was a story about that and about the um, and subsequently I wrote about the the uh, flavor and fragrance companies that are behind um, this industry. So I've switched gears now primarily to focusing on teaching. I teach at the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism, as Linda mentioned which is in the heart of Manhattan. And I teach interactive journalism, so video editing, blogging, audio, all that kind of stuff, as well as um, the craft of writing and reporting. And then now we've just started a brand new program, actually. We've just launched the pilot semester for an entrepreneurial journalism program. And so we're teaching mid-career journalists and graduate students of journalism to launch their own startup journalism businesses, which is really exciting. And we've funded over the last couple of years as the program was developing, um, 11 startups that we've funded with um, $140,000 in seed funding, basically grants, um, to help them get going. And they have created everything from, or the seeds of, have started creating from, because they're at various stages of development, everything from a mobile news um, delivery network for Nigeria, where people will uh, receive news by SMS message um, because they can't access newspapers, to a, uh, an iPhone application, to a blog for Ugandans abroad, um, all sorts of different startup ideas that have come out of this. Some of them are platform ideas, some of them are website ideas, some of them are um, mobile news delivery systems. Um, so we're teaching journalists, journalists, entrepreneurial journalists, the skills of business and entrepreneurship and generating new ideas as well as the technology skills and the journalism skills that they need to start up these businesses. So I'm very excited about doing that. I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun and it's a brand new program at the school. So I'm spending a lot of time thinking about how we can best do that. Um, and I also spent a lot of time thinking about how journalists can present themselves in a more professional way, which leads to our uh, subject for today, which is presenting yourself online and creating a stronger presence for yourself online. And what many of you have just said is that essentially you have a lot of great content. What I'm hearing is that you have a lot of great content, you're writing great stories, you're doing good work, and you just want to have a place to kind of centralize that, present it, um, make it available to people in a way that they can take advantage of it, and then you can put your best foot forward. So that's what we're going to talk about for the next um, period of time. So I'd like to turn your attention to this handout, um, which is a one-page handout that will give you an overview of this next section that we're about to embark on. While I do that, I'll also mention that um, I have um, provided here in your packet, with the help of the uh, Reynolds Center folks, um, the actual slides that I'm going to go through. So you have these. Um, you don't need to write everything down, but we have um, left you some notes, space for notes. So if you want to jot down notes alongside these slides, feel free to do so. Um, and we will also spend some time um, uh, later in the session on, on more hands-on aspects. If you do feel um, eager to try something out, you're welcome to do that. I don't mind if you do that, if it helps you to see on the screen that's in front of you. Is everyone logged in? OK, do we need to do that? Now, I, I say this with a caveat, which is that I certainly don't want people to be distracted. Often we are all distracted very easily by what's in front of us. So I say that to warn you that you don't need to actually do anything. But if you see something up here that you do want to try out, I want you to have that option. Uh, I, I trust you to use your best judgment about when you need to see something and when you're OK just following along with me, OK? Um, but in any case, I just want to make you aware of what you have in terms of the resources here. So if you want to jot notes on your slide handout, you can do that. Um, if you want to just follow along with this handout, which summarizes this section of the talk, that's fine as well. Okay? 
There is a third resource. I found that people benefit a lot from handouts, and they always say, well, are there more? Do you, can you give me something I can take home? So I've provided you with more handouts. If you, if you um, find those useful, that would be great. If not, you can just pay attention to what I'm saying and ignore that. Um, this handout is actually a, an, a digital handout, which I use because I can update it. And you can go home, and I can add something to it you know, in a couple months. And you can look at it again, and you'll see new, new uh, additions to it. And this is um, a handout specifically around this topic, how to launch you.com. And you'll see on that handout it has a bit.ly address, right? It's basically just a Google Doc, for those of you familiar with Google Docs. It's just a published Google Doc, right? It's a published Google Doc, which means it's easy for me to edit. Um, and the URL that I've shortened from it is bit.ly slash launch your site. You'll see it on here. You don't have to write it down. It's on the handout. Um, but uh, if you want to follow along with that as well, that kind of gives you an overview of the types of, of uh, sites that we're going to talk about. OK? Any questions thus far? Where we're headed? OK. So I'm going to go through these nine ways to build a site. And as I mentioned at the very beginning, not everyone was here at that point, so I'll just repeat it briefly. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's not just about WordPress, right? A lot of people have a misconception that they're going to have one presence online. And in fact, you may have one primary presence, and that might be a great idea and might work well for you. But you might also find that you actually will benefit from having multiple presences for different purposes. So the first site I'm going to show you, the first resource is flavors.me. How many people have actually already have a flavors.me page or have heard about? OK, a couple of you. Um, well, the helpers, that's great. Um, <laughs> So those of you who haven't, um, this has been a real great find for a lot of people um, when they discover that they actually can have a personal page in about five minutes. So if you feel overwhelmed by WordPress and you, you know, leave at the end of today and say, you know what, I don't know if I really want a WordPress site, which some people end up deciding, Flavors.me can be a great alternative. And I'll show you what it looks like. This is the logo. This is a Flavors.me site. And the advantage of a Flavors.me site is that it's essentially a landing page. So it's a very simple resource for people who want to see what content you have produced. It can be your Vimeo videos. It can be your Flickr uh, photos. It can be your LinkedIn profile, which acts as a kind of online resume. It can be any other blog that you have and an, has an RSS feed. Um, it can be any of these kinds of things. You see here uh, the person's tweets, their LinkedIn messages, their blog, et cetera, their Flickr photos. Um, in this case, they have a posthumous uh, blog as well. They have a brief uh, area for um, you know, summarizing what, who they are, what they do, and that's flexible. The nice thing about Flavors on ME is that it draws on the content you already have. So many of us already have online content in these various places. And what Flavors on ME says, well, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We just need to present a nice surface for that, a nice way for people to access all the content that you've already created. So what you do at Flavors on ME is you basically connect the basic page to the accounts you already have, the Flickr account, the Vimeo account, the YouTube account, any other accounts that you have, your Twitter account, where you're already producing content. And once you do that, you have some design options. And I'll show you um, some other designs that people have done with Flavors.me. In fact, why don't we do that right now? Um, so I'm going to go out here and show you a couple of Flavors.me pages. And you can see there, there are two services, Flavors.me and About.me. They both have a very similar look, as you can see. This, these are happen to be About.me pages. Um, and it's a variant on Flavors on ME. It's actually, do you know the Winklevoss story? Winklevoss is claiming Facebook is their idea and so forth. So there's a similar battle that was starting to go on between the about.me folks and the Flavors on ME, because you can see it looks very similar, right? So, but the point here is, let's go back to Flavors on ME. And um, you'll see here the home page, very simple, very straightforward, very easy to, to work with. Um, the options you get are very simple. And you can use any of these services. So if you already have content, which some of you already do, um, you can simply pull in the content. I'll actually just show you mine. Um, I, just, uh, I don't think I've updated this one recently. Um, but just to give you a sense of what it looks like. Um, so the nice thing is that you actually get the, um, the, the material right in line in the page. So it pulls up your tweets right in the page. It pulls in your LinkedIn, pulls in your blog, and it pulls in your bookmarks or whatever else you decide to share on um, flavors.me. And if you go to the directory, flavors.me slash directory, you'll see dozens of other design options. You can kind of get a sense of the variety of different ways of presenting yourself. Um, and it's very, very, very easy. Um, you can upload a background image if you want, or you can use one of the um, existing options that they have. But as this loads up, you'll see that it can be very simple, or it can actually be quite extensive in terms of the amount of material that you post up there. Um, and there are a lot of journalists who are now using this. 
So actually, um, Adam Westbrook um, wrote a blog post recently saying he thinks journalists should use flavors.me instead of WordPress because it's simpler, it's an easier point of access for people, it doesn't um, require a lot of active maintenance, right, because we're all busy doing our stories and reporting and the reason that we're here is partly because we don't always know how to do this as well as we w might or as well as we want to. So this basically kind of maintains itself, right? If you're updating content on a, a separate blog, if you're updating your Twitter um, feed and so forth, if you're updating your Vimeo videos and your Flickr photos and other places that you're adding content, this will basically pull it all in for you. So you can see that there are various different approaches to how people are using this, right? So again, the distinction between, between a page and a post is an important one. A page is generally a static piece of content that lives and stays the same way. You can add to it or change it, but essentially it doesn't get added to on a regular basis. It's kind of a static page that where the things at the top are always at the top, things at the bottom are always at the bottom, right? So for instance, the About Me page, um, this is an example of a static page, right? I'm not adding to this every day or every week. If I do a no new blog post, it doesn't change this. Um, Whereas um, each time you do a post, if, you're, if you have a blog page, it'll add to the top of that page, right? Um, so that's a distinction between posts and pages. Um, comments, as you'd imagine, you can moderate comments, you can accept them or mark them as spam. Um, this is where your theme lives. So your theme is kind of like a template, right? We're all familiar with templates in other contexts. It tells you what the site's going to look like, and you can customize it. So depending on whether you have a free theme or a premium theme, you might have different customization options. Question? Um, that's the part I'm talking about right now. So Coffee Break is just the name of the particular theme that I've chosen to use. Um, and it's provided by a premium theme creator called Woo Themes, which sells themes for anywhere from, some of them are free, some of them are like $50, $70. We actually have a school subscription so people in our school can use the premium themes for free. Um, other organizations may have a similar arrangement or you can just buy an individual theme for $50 or $70. And it's a one-time fee. You just pay that once and then it belongs to you. And you can get other resources with that, like they'll give you updates if they improve the theme and so forth. Um, in this case, and I'll go through each of these in a little more detail as we go through, but um, this Coffee Break theme happens to have a variety of options. So by the way, each of these is a is a menu that has options within it, right? This is just the overall dashboard. When you click on each of these, you get more options. So when I click on Coffee Break, I get various options, like do I like a blue background or a black background or a red background? Do I want my type to be this font or that font? Do I want to include a slider on the home page? So if you look at my site, it has a slider. So after a certain number of seconds, the next picture appears or the next text appears, then the next text appears. So I could turn that on or off. So each theme will tend to have a variety of different options. Um, and, that, and this is where you set those options for the particular theme that you have, okay? And each, this is where, this is the primary place where theme providers will change, will vary. So Graph Paper Press, the options for that theme provider will be different than for Woo themes or for some free themes that, that WordPress makes itself. Some of them are very flexible and very easy to adjust. Others are less flexible and more sort of fixed. Um, and there are literally hundreds of thousands, I think, at this point, of themes. And if you do searches like 100 best free WordPress themes, you can see them one after the other and see whatever appeals to you. And the nice thing about WordPress is that installing a theme at this point with this version of the, of the product is as easy as basically just downloading a file or selecting a file if you're searching within WordPress and clicking make this my new theme. That's it. You don't have to, used to have to do all kinds of installation and type in a PHP code. It was a whole long process. Now it's like, oh, I like this theme. Oh, I'll just change it. Um, it's very, very, very simple. And you can change them back and forth um, because it's basically just layering the theme on top of your content. Um, appearance uh, lets you change, obviously, as it sounds, some of the ways in which your site appears. Um, we'll go through a couple examples. Plugins are things you can add to your site. So for instance, there's a plugin that when you add an audio file, it'll present you an audio player that uses a plugin for that. Um, users determines who's using your site. So if you're sharing it with someone or if someone who's helping you, they can be a user and they're able to log in to your site. One of the things, as a note on that, one of the benefits of um, WordPress over using a tool like Dreamweaver, I can change my site right here. right? I could change my site from my phone if I wanted to or from my iPad because it's all bit living on the web. Right? 
If I'm using Dreamweaver, I have to go home to my machine where that site is living, right? There might be some ways around that, but generally speaking, that's how it works. So it's nice that, and, and, and someone else can log in as well. In fact, many sites, as you all know, who, that are using WordPress, you know, there can be m many people logging in to it. So it's, it's uh, flexible and it's cloud-based, essentially. So tools gives you a couple of specific tools you can use, um, which I'll show you. Um, settings lets you adjust settings. And then if you install additional plugins, sometimes they give you additional options here. So for instance, I've installed an additional slider separate from the one that this um, came with. And I can adjust the settings here. I also have used Backupify, which allows me to back up my WordPress content automatically. So those are just a couple of examples of, of, um, of additional plugins. So this overall is the dashboard. So that's our kind of starting point. This is our kind of working um, interface for working with WordPress as we're building our site. Now we've unfurled some of these links in the dashboard, right? So now you see some of the sub options. So now it looks a little bit more complicated, but essentially it's just showing you the options within those main sections that we've just outlined. So um, I'm going to grab this laser here so I can point to specific things. Um, up here we're looking at the posts module up here, right? Do you see that? So I've clicked edit, and now I'm able to choose one of the existing posts. These happen to be articles that I've written. And um, I'm able to now either add a new post by clicking this Add New button, or I can click on one of these and make an adjustment or an edit to one of the existing posts. Right? And I can sort and filter. I can sort by just certain dates or certain categories of posts. I can look at just the drafts or whatever. I can also add a new post from here. I can look at the types of posts I have, looking at post tags or the categories of posts I have. Um, so categories, for instance, might be a type of content, so travel stories video stories, um, or, um, you know, or stories by a particular person if you're working with other people, um, whereas tags tend to be more specific to the content. Um, so Bermuda or Hawaii or whatever you know, specific kinds of things you're writing about to help um, articulate more clearly for the reader what different kinds of content you have there. And the advantage of using tags is that you can then create, um, if we back up here, um, we can then create um, tag clouds. So this is a tag cloud where people, if they were interested, in fact, in my site, you don't really need it. But just as an example, I wanted to show you this. Um, if people were interested in just the stories about Apple, they could just click that. right? Or if they want to see just your stories about Bermuda, they could just click Bermuda. So tags are a way of allowing people to, to navigate in a different way on your site. OK, so moving on from that section, we look at media. Actually, we'll move on through isn't this guy. OK, so here's the media library. So if you click on media, you'll get this. Um, and you can add new media. Just click Add New, and you can upload something, a picture. And you can then resize the picture or make some basic adjustments. Generally speaking, you want to make your adjustments outside of WordPress because it's not as powerful um, in editing you know, engine as, as, um, as other tools are. So I would say use another tool, whether um, you're using Photoshop or Aperture, or whether you're using a simpler tool like Picnic um, to edit the photo, resize it, et cetera. Um, but you can also have a bunch of things that you've stored here and then use them as needed. So once you've uploaded them, you can then um, import them or insert them into any blog post or any web page. So for instance, once you create your JPEGs of your stories, you could upload them, and then as you're ready, you can insert them into pages that you create. You can see here it can also include audio, et cetera. Um, no, it doesn't. Um, for certain things, it's better to use JPEGs. They'll be more flexible, and you can um, insert them in pages a little more easily. Um, there are some tools for. Um, working with both JPEGs and PDFs, but PDFs are um, a little bit different types of files, so they're not as flexible in using in, in your media library. Yeah. Um. So here you can edit the links. This one I don't think is particularly crucial, but if you you know blog roll is part of your site, this is a way to quickly add the links that you include on the side of your site. Um, editing pages is. Um, 
an important thing. It's where you create your about page and your other big sort of section pages if you have them. Um, and it operates much like a editing of a, any other post page would. And the interface is very similar, um, just like Word, Microsoft Word, right? You see bold and italics. We'll look at that in a little while. Here you can edit comments. You can approve them or mark them as spam. Um, and here's where you edit the, uh, the theme itself. So you can see some theme options. So here I can upload an image for the site. If I have a logo or something, I can upload it. Um, I can choose a style sheet, which will basically change the color and change the default appearance of this site. Um, I can also have a favicon. If people know what a favicon is, if you look at my site or a lot of other sites, there'll be when you go to the browser bar, there'll be a little image with it. Like on CNN, it's a red little red bar that says letters CNN. That's a favicon. It's a little icon that indicates in the browser bar something about the site. So you can upload an image of yourself or whatever else you want, and that will look. It will identify the site in the browser bar. It's called a favicon. It's not a Im hugely important thing, but if you'd like to use that. Um, and you can see, you can customize other things on the site. So you can customize what's on the front page. You can customize what's on the footer. So in the footer of my site, for instance, it enables you to, I just embedded a little piece of code from, um, from Google, which basically lets, if people wanted to send me an instant message, they could do it from the website. So that's a free piece of code you could put in the footer. You can put anything. Right, you can embed a video in the footer. Um, you can put anything you want in the footer of your site. So here's where you manage your themes. Um, and you can, again, have multiple themes that are sort of available to you. That These are themes I've already looked at and was curious what they looked like. So I tested them out. And if I wanted to, I could just activate them. Or I could preview them. Um, and then you'll see what your content will look like with these different themes. And you can add new themes. You just click Add New, and then you can search for a different existing theme. You can also add themes by going to um, the, a different website, like graphpaperpress.com or wothemes.com or many other theme sites, and download them as a zip file. Then you can go in here and just upload the zip file. So it's very, very simple to do. And you don't have to do any installation. You just upload the zip file and click Install. Um, widgets are another key element of WordPress sites. And widgets are, as you can see here, I don't know if you can read this text, but essentially widgets are little things that you can add. So for instance, um, I've got a Twitter widget. I've got the tag cloud widget. I've got a search widget, right, so people can search the site. Um, I've got an archives widget, so people could look at old blog posts or old pages. You can have an RSS widget. So some of you mentioned you have a blog somewhere else. You can use an RSS widget, which will pull in your latest posts. Um, you can use a Flickr widget. Here's a Flickr widget that comes with this, um, this particular theme. You can see it says here, Woo Flickr, Woo Latest News. So the theme itself installs some widgets that you can choose from. So if you have a different theme, you might have a few different widgets um, that are available to you. You can have a text widget. So let's say you just on the side of your site, you just want to have a little about me right on your front page. You could just have a text widget and then just type in some text about yourself. So it doesn't have to be a whole separate about me page. It could be a text widget that appears on the side of your site. Um, you could also have a recent comments widget. So we have that on, our, on, on a couple of sites that I work with, where people are interacting with the site. And you go to the site, you can see quickly at the very top what people are on the side, what people are saying. What are, what are the recent comments that people have said? Um, and so on and so forth. So there, th those are the main kinds of widgets. Um, and they're kind of a category widget. So if I want to have a, cat a list of categories that I write about, so travel, food, whatever, that could be a, another widget you'd use, et cetera. Those are the primary ones that are, um, that are useful, I think. And um, yeah. And you can choose here. This is the sidebar to the home page. I can have a different set of widgets on the sidebar page or um, on the sidebar of a page or on the sidebar of a blog section. Right? So within a site, you can have different sections. You can have a home page section, right, which is about what's on the home page. You can have a blog section, right, which is a separate section of your site. And you could also have a page section, like an About Me page. Right? So what appears on the About Me page, I might not want. Let's say I have that text box, right, the text widget on the home page. And it says you know, something about me, a couple of sentences about me. I don't need that also to be on the About Me page. right? Because the About Me page already has that. So that would be, I wouldn't want that same widget on both of those pages. Does that make sense? Yes? Maybe? No? Any questions about that? 
Does everyone get what widgets are? Is it, is it clear? Does this make sense to people? OK. Um, yeah, yeah, there are. They are. And in fact, um, in a little bit, before we get to the break, I'll do some live. Um, it's a little quicker to work this way because th that machine is a little bit slow. But I wanted to show you this first, and then I'll show you actually how I manipulate the, the site. And then you'll have a chance to put your hands on it and practice it. But yeah, you literally just drag it or drag it off or on. So let's say I, I, I want to get rid of this blog archive. No one's using it. I just drag it off. It's that simple. And when I drag it on, I click on it, and it gives me some customization option. Like for Twitter Rigid, it'll say, how many tweets do you want? Do you want three or two or one? Or do you want it to identify you know, with your picture or without your picture? So you just click on it, and it gives you a couple of those options. OK. So let me just pause for a second before I get to plugins. How are we doing? I want to get a sense of the room. Are you getting this? Am I moving too slowly, too quickly? Give me some, some feedback, because it's hard for me to get a sense. I don't know you all very well yet. So give me some verbal feedback. Are we going too slow? OK, I, so, so we'll get to that in a second. I want you to see what that is, because if, if you're trying to do it while I'm talking, you won't be able to do either. Yeah. OK? <laughs> so, but you will have a chance to put your hands on it. But it'll help, I think, um, to, uh, to see what it is first so you know what you're actually looking at. I've done this before where people are doing it, and they can't, can't, cannot hear what I'm saying because they're lost in their machines. OK? So this is plugins. That's the next major thing. So we've talked about themes, right? different themes that you can have, which is the overall template for your site. We've talked about the overall dashboard, right, which is the main page where you can make these options and dive into these sections. We've talked about widgets. And now we're talking about plugins. Okay? So those terms are a little bit similar, but they're two different kinds of things. So widgets, we saw the extent of the widgets, right? There were 10, 12, 14 of them. Not that many, right? They're very basic kinds of things, right? Plugins, it's like a whole universe of stuff, right? There's a plugin for just about everything you can imagine. There's probably a Harry Potter plugin. Right? There's literally a plug-in for anything you can think of. Um, so here's just a couple examples. So cute profiles. That's a little thing that if you look at my site, I think I still have them on there. Um, on the side, there are these little um, things on the side that connect you to my Twitter account or my LinkedIn page or whatever else. Um, they're, very, they're supposed to be very subtle. But that's a plug-in. It's a little thing that I drop into the site and I activate it. It says, where do you want it? On the right side of the page or the left side of the page? Very easy. That's all you have to do. And it says, well, what is your Twitter account? What is your LinkedIn? Once you put that in, it's already on your page. right? So again, this is the nice thing about WordPress. You don't have to code anything. If you're using Dreamweaver or old form HTML, right? you'd have to figure out what all of that code is. right? That could take a couple hours. Here, you literally upload a plugin onto your WordPress settings, and you activate it, and that's it. There, there it is. Right? And you can unactivate it, deactivate it. A widget is a simpler um, piece of content that you add on that essentially draws on um, something that's already on your site. So for instance, um, in the, for the most part, not all of them, searches your site, for instance, looks at your tag cloud of your, of your um, terms that you, you create, your tags, your categories, your links. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Whereas plugins are things that are coming from elsewhere. Right? Okay, Profiles so are coming from. Plugging in your Twitter feed, you're plugging in your. For the most part, yeah. Now, I don't want to say that entirely, to make that entirely a hard and fast distinction, because this actually happens to be a widget. This is a Twitter widget. That's why I would get confused. Yeah. Um, so, but, but generally speaking, most of these widgets are things that are simpler things that show the recent posts on your site or show a search of your site. Whereas these are things, these plugins are th completely different pieces of software that come from s other people that create them. Um, in, the re in reality, they're both things that make your site a little bit more, that add features to your site. So um, it's kind of like just, they're just two different things in two different places, but they're both making your site better. So, um, ugh, the screen is all yucky. Um, this thing, this one is called After Read. So it provides a little suggestion after, at the bottom of a post. Here's another thing that might be useful or interesting. Here's another thing that you might like to read if you've read that. Uh, those are from your blog. Oh, from your blog. Yes, yeah. Um, and Akismet basically um, gets this to spam. So it, it, it marks comments as spam. Audio player is, is uh, you know, if you put an MP3 file, it'll show it as a nice clickable player. Um, Backupify basically backs up your WordPress. 
Q profile, as I mentioned, it shows your Twitter, like just, just the icon for Twitter, Facebook, whatever else you want nicely on the side. You can see an example. Well, the Twitter widget actually lists your full tweets, whereas this is just the T icon. And people can click it to get to my Twitter or your Twitter page, um, or whatever social networks you choose. Um, favicons, um, again, that just lets you create a favicon for your site. Hello Dolly is just a default one to show you what it looks like. Um, lightbox actually is kind of cool. If you click on a picture that has um, on a site with a lightbox um, plugin, it'll pop up and the picture will kind of like come at you and fill up the screen. You've probably seen them on different photo sites. It's just a nice photo effect for displaying photos. Um, so Twitter Widget Pro actually is a it actually is a plugin, but it just shows up in the widgets, which is maybe confusing. Um, WordPress.com stats. Um, this is, <laughs> yeah, uh, and there are, there are literally thousands of others. We'll do a search in a minute um, where I'll show you, a, you know, a bunch of other kinds of plugins. But these are just a few examples. Yeah. And would you think plugins are paid for? No, they're all free. They're all free. Yeah. They're all free. There probably are some that are paid for, but I don't think I've paid for any. Yeah, they're and mostly they, free. Uh, do you think you all have to pick and choose? Or yeah, you pick and choose. So for instance, um, you know, you might, if you're doing business reporting, you have a lot of business stories where you use tables. You want to have a tool that lets you put in quick tables. You could search plugins for table tools, and there'll be a tool that says, put in your five, whatever, bits of data, and we'll create a table out of it. So you'd search the, the directory of plugins and find one and install it. So it's very, very simple. And I'll do a sample a search so you can see what that looks like. Um, so let me just go through a couple of these other ones. So these are the users, right? So I happen to have a couple of users. Um, these are tools, not really that significant. Um, what this does is basically, press this basically lets you, it's a bookmarklet, which means you can drag it up to your toolbar in your browser, and then when you're on a website that you want to notate on your site, when you want to blog about a particular website, for instance, you can click press this, and it'll pop up a kind of half-created blog post with the link to the site that you were just looking at. Right? So if you want to blog about something, let's say you're, you blog about travel trends, and you look at a travel site and you want to add that to your blog. You could do it in an old-fashioned way, which would be to like copy the URL, copy and paste some content, go open up a new window for WordPress, create a new post, all that kind of stuff. This shortens that. So instead of doing all that, you go to a website that you're interested in writing about on your blog, on your site, and you click press this. It logs in, creates a post, creates the link on, in the post, and lets you just edit it and then send it. See what I mean? So it's just a little tool to facilitate creating a new blog post more quickly. Um, and you can add that to your browser. So you literally just grab this with your mouse and drag it to your browser. It's that simple. How do we know what theme we've used for the one? We've used a Woo theme, but how do we know what specific Woo theme was used on the website? You don't know that. So as a, you mean as a viewer? I've told you it's coffee break in my case, right? But as a general viewer in, in general, you, won't, you wouldn't know that. So I could, at the bottom, include a link to that if I wanted to, but most of the time people don't do that. Um, and sometimes you'd like to know, right? Like, because it would be helpful to know you see a good template. But you can always email the person. They'll often tell you. Um, so this is settings. You can change how your settings appear. So for instance, let's say you don't want your front page to have your latest posts, right? This is an important one for us, for our purposes. You may not want your home page to be just a lot of new blog posts. You may want your home page to be a static page, right? which is whatever you want. It's a big picture of you. It's a big bio of you. It's a big whatever. right? Some of the things that you've thought about probably when you've thought about how your website wants you want it to look, that can be a static page. So all you do is select that, and then you choose which static page you want. So if you've already created it, great, or you can create it at that point. Um, and then you can designate some other settings here. Um, and there's some other settings that you can adjust. So you can also import uh, material if you've already used. Some of you mentioned you already had a blog of one kind or another. So if you already have one of these kinds of sites, um, so for instance, if you have had a WordPress.com site and you're moving to WordPress.org, you can import it over here. Or if, you have a blog, if you've had a blogger site or if you've had a live journal or any other movable type site or an RSS of some other kind that you want to import, you can do that. Um, this lets you import it relatively seamlessly. The, the, you know, with the dot blog post or 
Um, yeah, so what you would do is, let's say, like for instance, I had jeremykaplan.blogspot.com, and I pointed my URL, jeremykaplan.com, to that site. And then when I moved over to WordPress, I just went to my host and said, you know what, don't post, don't point over to the, blog po the, to the blogspot site, because that's not my home page anymore. Now, point over to the WordPress site. And so I gave it a different place to point. Does that make sense? So instead of Jeremy Kaplan blogspot, it was Jeremy Yeah, it was always jeremykaplan.com, right? Oh, okay, okay. But, but instead of jeremykaplan.com pointing over to blogspot, it pointed over to this WordPress site. No, no, no. You go. You have settings. You have a settings page with your host. You have a settings page with your host, and it says a lot of gobbledygook that you know you got to sort of figure out what that is. And actually, just on on hosts for a second, I use Bluehost. I don't have any stake in them or whatever. You can use whatever host you want. But I've found in my experience when I call them, they have a 24-hour phone line. Mm -hmm. So there are cases where I don't actually know how something works, right? Because there's some technical stuff sometimes, and you know you just need to ask someone. Mm -hmm. And so I do call them. If I need to, and I'll say, well, how do I do this? I can't understand this. Because sometimes they're not designed as well as they should be, frankly. And that's mm -hmm. true of all of them. GoDaddy, Bluehost, Go, uh, whatever, any of them. And so you have to ask questions. And I do call them, and they'll, and they'll say, yeah, yeah, just fill in, just use this code and find this code there. Mm -hmm. right? Because it depends what, where you're pointing it to. Generally, the easiest way would be just to point the two main servers. Is that mm -hmm. yep. thing you should yes. do is just look for the main server yep. from one end to the other? Yep, exactly. Yeah, that's usually, and that's, and that's usually what you'll want to change is the name server address. Um, it's, it's actually a really straightforward process. Um, when you're on import, where is that coming from? Is that your settings or somewhere Sorry, yeah, it's under settings. Yep. So if we go back here, um, oh, it's below the fold, unfortunately. Yeah, so you know how, see how these have like various different things? Each of these things has various different options. So the, the um, import, I mean, the settings one is here, and one of the options is import. Okay. Yeah. And I'll go out to, I'll go out to my um, dashboard now and show you, uh, show you that. So when you went from one blog world to the other, did, did you, were you able to take the old blog and bring it to the new blog, or did the old no, blog I didn't, just and, out, stays out there? Yeah, and in my case, I didn't want to do that. You can, I could have done that, but I didn't want to do that. So yeah. Yeah. Basically, yeah. So, a couple quick principles. Um, maybe we'll come back and look at those in a minute. I want to go out now and show you the um, dashboard. So, um, let's see. I'll show you a couple of different dashboards. So, I'll show you WordPress.com. Um, dashboard, and then I'll show you. Um, I'm sorry? Blogsmith? I'm not familiar with that. What is that product? Uh, that's how I, I wrote my columns for AOL Daily Finance. Okay, so it's an AOL product? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's like a dashboard on the top. Of yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't have experience with that. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure it's similar. Most of the dashboards are similar, right? Because you're adding posts and pages and whatever, right? So this is a very this is purely a sandbox blog. Do you guys know what I mean by a sandbox blog? Sandbox is like somewhere you play to get some practice, right, or learn something. So um, I create sandbox blogs so I can test different things out. I have a blogger sandbox blog. I have a WordPress sandbox blog. Just for demoing, showing people things, testing things out myself, right? So this is a sandbox blog. It's silverboat.wordpress.com. It's not anything of any consequence. It's just for demonstration purposes. Um, but this is WordPress.com, right? So you can see. Very similar to the WordPress.org site I was showing you a minute ago, right? But now I'm on the web, so now I can show you um, some live interaction. So you can see here, you always start out with the dashboard where you get your posts. You, you can see sort of what you've got already, right? Um, and I can create a quick post if I want to, right? So here's a quick test post as a demo at Cebu, OK? And now I can sort of add some pictures. I can upload an image. I want to add an image. Um, it's a little bit slow, but I could add an image here. Um, I could also, um, you know, add links. I could do other kinds of, you know, traditional things you'd add on a. Um, not going to wait for that to load, but um, I could add other kinds of content here. 
Um, and this is a quick press, so it's not really, it's not really you know, as full the, the um, editor as I, as I might want. But it's a quick way of adding a very quick post, OK? Um, OK, but here we see the typical dashboard that we were just looking at, right? It's a little bit different because it's WordPress.com, but it's basically almost the same, right? It's got the same general tabs, the pages, right, comments. Um, it has a couple other things like polls, et cetera, but basically it's very similar. So if we go to posts, um, I can see the, OK, so I'm on pages right now. So here's an about page. Now if I click the about page, I can edit it. Um, and I can, you'll see that the editor is very much like the editor you're used to in Microsoft Word or any other program, right? So you've got bold, italics, link. This is a block quote. This is if you want to strike something um, through, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there are various other little buttons here that are pretty self-explanatory, right? So um, I've inserted a picture in this case. Um, and now I can delete that picture or I can edit that image. So if I edit that image, I get a little image editing option. I can make it, can you guys see this? OK. So I can make it 90% or 80%. I can make it a line left or a line right, line center, whatever. Um, so you can see here, it's a WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get kind of editor. It's showing you what it's going to look like. Um, and you can give it a caption if you want to. If you want to link it out to a separate website or you want to link it out to the original picture, you can do that. Um, you can give it alternate text. If someone blind is reading it, reading, seeing this page, they'll get the alternate text. You can use that if you want. Um, there's some advanced settings if you want to um, add more advanced information. Generally, you don't need to, to use that. So that's how one way to add an image to, um, to basically any kind of post. Um, you can see here these other these other kinds of editing tools are very similar to any other word processing editing tool, right? And you can use these tools whether you're creating a page or whether you're creating a post, right? So it's very similar to just creating a Word document anytime you're creating a page or a post. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. And then you can look at, when, when you're creating a page, you can view the page to see what it's going to look like. Um, and you can also look at the HTML code if you want to. So if you flip between these two tabs, you can alternate between a visual look at it, which basically shows you what the page is going to look like when it's on the web, or an HTML view, which shows you the code behind the page. And this is useful if you're adding something. If you're adding an embed code, you don't want to add it to the visual appearance of the site. right? You want to add it to the code. So that's one common mistake when people want to embed a Vimeo video or a scribbed um, PDF or any other document. Anything you want to embed, you have to make sure you're on the HTML view, right? Otherwise, you're going to embed the code itself onto your site. You're not going to embed the object that you're trying to embed. Does that make sense? A lot of people make that mistake. Most people make that mistake at least a couple times before they get the hang of it. Um, so let's look at themes. Um, because in WordPress.com, you also have a variety of options of themes. The nice thing is that um, they've given you the themes already in your um, basically in your theme dashboard. So you don't even have to go out and search for them. So you can browse the themes. You can browse the, they now have some premium themes. So actually they're better themes even though you're using WordPress.com and you pay a little bit for them. Um, and you can see when you look at a theme, you can see what widgets it has. You can see you know, some other information about the theme. But let's say I decide, you know what, I really like this theme. Or I think I like this theme. So then I would click Preview. And now I can see what that theme is going to look like on my site. If I choose that theme, here's what it's going to look like. So I can say, oh, that's good. Or you know what? The fonts are kind of small. I don't really like that brown style. I just, this isn't my thing. So I can just click, so I can click activate it if I like that. Or I can just close it out and look for another one. But the nice thing is it actually gives you a nice kind of preview of what the site will look like once you choose that theme before you've actually activated it. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to continue looking at other themes. So, so do you see how you can really easily search and choose whatever theme you like and get a sense visually, um, a preview of thumbnail, and then a preview of your actual content using that theme? Yeah. So in that example, if you didn't like it brown or you didn't like how small the font is, uh -huh. is that something that you could add to make bigger? Yes and no. So it depends on the flexibility of that theme. Yeah, it depends on the flexibility of that theme. On WordPress.com, the themes tend to be a little bit less flexible. Um, but the premium themes tend to be quite flexible. Um, so it depends which theme you're using. 
if you know CSS, if you know some coding, you can sometimes insert some code that will change the color and so forth. But um, unless you're an advanced user, you probably won't be familiar with that at least right away. Can so. Uh huh. It's a one-time fee. Yep. Um, so and you can see here that there are tags, so they tell you a little bit about the um, about the theme. So this is specifically a photo blogging theme. It's good for photo blogging. Or this theme has two columns. Um, it also has flexible width columns. So if you want to be able to adjust the column, it'll give you that flexibility. So you can look at the tags and see. Um, some characteristics of the theme. The other advantage of these little tags, you can search. Like, let's say you know on your site you've already drawn a mock up of it. You know you want a left sidebar, right? So you can click on left sidebar and it'll show you other, um, it'll load up paid, um, themes that have that as an option. Then you can just choose among those. Does that make sense? So these are tools that let you kind of refine the themes that they have available according to specific characteristics that you have or that you want in your site. So this is really one of the best features, I think, of, of WordPress is that you can quickly preview the themes. You can activate them. You can change back and forth as many times as you want. Um, you, you never ruin anything or you know, damage anything. Um, you're free to um, you know, experiment and try back and forth and switch as many times as you want. Um, so you can go in here and you can you know, see that you have these various different options. So somebody asked about drag and drop. So let's say I want to have a calendar on this site. So I'm just going to drag this calendar. Do you see it? I'm just grabbing it with the mouse and just dragging it into the sidebar. Now it's giving me this option. Do you see that? It says, what's the title of this calendar? So I'll put, what should I call it? Uh, calendar of posts. I don't know. Probably don't need to have that many words, but whatever. OK, so now it's there. Now I'm going to add, let's say I'm going to add archives. And you can see that I can drop it below or above. Do you see that? It's giving me the option of putting it wherever I want. Let me put it below, and I can say, you know, old posts or no. Let's just say archives, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, and I can display as a drop down, right? So people, when I click on it, they'll dr it'll drop down as um, a variety of of, um, of options or not. So let me unclick that and save it. And now, what else? Um, let's put a um, what else should we put in here? Um, let's put a search box. And let's put the search box up top. And we'll call it search. OK, now if we go out to the site, um, we'll see that I've already customized the site. And it's going to now, hopefully, assuming um, things are going well. Oh, this is now a static page. So it probably won't appear on the static page. Um, so there we go. So now you see that? We've got the search box. We've got the calendar of posts, right? And we've got the archives. And, and because I didn't choose, I didn't check that box that said drop down, right? Do you remember that? So because I didn't choose that, it actually is putting them all out there. If I chose drop down, it would have you know, smushed them into one. And then if somebody clicked on it, it would have dropped down, right? So if I want to conserve space, I would choose show as drop down. But do you see how easy that was? I just customized that particular page just by dragging and dropping a couple of things, right? And now I can change it back, right? If I don't want it on the right, I could change the theme and put it on the left, right? It's totally robust and totally flexible um, and very easy to change and adjust. Questions about how I did that or what I just did? So that's, that was about widgets, right? That was a very simple demonstration of just adding widgets, changing widgets. Now let's say I want the archives to appear in the footer instead. I don't even know where the footer is on this um, site. Or let's say I want to put um, something else in the footer. I can just drop something else in the footer. So I can just drop this text box in the footer. Um, whatever. Uh, um, coming soon, whatever. New videos, whatever. I don't know. Um, so. Um, I can add that, and then again, the site will show that in the footer, et cetera. So very easy to customize and change that. Um, we're going to take a break in a minute. I'm just going to show you a couple more things here, and then we'll take a little break, and then we'll get into a hands-on section where I'll walk around and kind of work with you individually as well as our helpers will, 
and you get to sort of practice um, building something. Yeah. Yeah, I just I wanted to keep this the window where I was working open while I opened a new window, just so I wouldn't have to like reload both of them. This way I could just open a separate tab. Um, and I just hit Command T. It's simple to open up a new tab. So you can create a menu if you want a menu to look differently. So if we look at the site, this sandbox site, um, it's got a very simple menu right here, right? But maybe I want to change the menu or I want to change the way the menu looks. I can use the menu editing options to do that. I can create a custom menu here. Um, and there are some other ways you can customize the site, and I encourage you to, um, to play around with that. Um, the, um, yeah, and there's some new things. This iPad thing is new. Um, so this actually basically will allow your visitors to experience it like an iPad, um, like an iPad app. So that's actually a brand new thing. Um, and that's one of the other advantages of using a tool like this. They're adding new features. I mean, if you're using Dreamweaver and you wanted to add this feature, I don't know what you'd begin to do. It'd be a pain. You have to figure out what the code is and find the HTML or create it yourself. Here, they've just created it and they've just added it to my dashboard. I didn't even see that the last time I used this. So it's, it's always added. What's that? It's just right under appearance. So, um, and they've added some other things um, here as well, which you can look into if you want to. So. If you, for instance, want a specific background image for your site, you can upload a background image there, um, et cetera, et cetera. If you are knowledgeable about CSS or if you eventually learn CSS, you can edit the CSS, meaning the code of the site itself. So you do have some control over that, although I would encourage you, unless you really know what you're doing, not to mess with that. Um, if you want to have someone else collaborate on it, you can quickly add them as a user. So it's very easy to do that. Um, and um, and then you can sort of explore the other tools that you have here. So if you do want to post by email, you can enable that. So and then it'll actually generate a special email address that's distinctive to you, like your name, gobbledygook seventy seven sixty six whatever, at WordPress.com. And when you email that address, it'll know that that's you specifically, because no one else has that specific email address. So that would be a way of adding material, sort of like we talked about with Posturus. That would be a way of adding to your blog or your site by email if you wanted to. So some of the features that the other sites and the other tools have, um, these guys are now also incorporating. Blogger, incidentally, has a feature like that as well. Um, and then if we look at domains, um, there's a couple of new sort of um, kinds of things that enables you to do. Um, and you can explore these depending on you know, the, the degree to which it, it's relevant to you. Um, some of you may be you know, interested in focusing on the design. Others of you might be fo interested in focusing on the technical aspects of it. Um, but if you wanted to, um, um, to add a separate domain, you could do that. Or if you want to add your site to a separate domain, you can do that. Um, what else? OK, so that, that's basically you've seen the dashboard. You get a sense of generally how things work, how to create a new page, et cetera. Um, after the break, um, we can go ahead and you know, get started just kind of getting familiar with this. When you get to WordPress.com, if you haven't, um, so this is what you're going to see when you're creating a new page. And one of the things I'd recommend you do is create an about page, because that's something pretty much everyone will need to do. So how many of you actually have those resources that we asked you to bring? It's OK if you didn't, but if you do, it'd be, be great. So, um, so if you have that, basically you can start creating your about page. That's basically the raw material for your about page. Um, and it's simple as giving it a title about me and putting in this material, right? Um, once you do that, and once you once you um, you add your stuff here, you can preview it, click preview, and make sure it looks like you want, and then you can publish it, and it'll have that address, right? So when you first go to WordPress, I'm going to log out now, unless anyone has any other questions about this interface before I do that. Okay. So I'm going to log out now, and then you'll see what I'll. I, am, I, am I sure I want to leave, right? Because I haven't saved whatever I had on this page, so it's asking me that. OK, so now I'm logged out. But if I go to WordPress.com, which is what you guys are going to do in a minute, it's going to say, start, you know, get started, sign up. So when I sign up, it'll ask me, well, what do you want to call your site? So I'm going to call it you know, jeremy.wordpress.com or whatever you want to call it. right? Then you can worry about moving it over to your URL later. right? So 
Ultimately, you might want to have your own name.com, but for now, while you're building it, it's probably just as well if you don't have your professional name associated with it, right, until it's ready to go. So you'll just call it your name or whatever you want to call it, .wordpress.com. It's free. And you'll start adding pages, right? That's what we're going to do. You're just going to start adding some, a couple pages if you want to add a couple posts um, to get yourself started. And then you can change the name. Whatever. You can change the name. You can change just about everything and anything. Um, but you'll know how to use it. You'll have a sense of how it works. And you'll have a sense of some different themes. You may pick a theme that you like to work with as a starting point. You can always change that later. Um, but you'll be familiar with it. And then uh, later on, um, you'll be able to expand on it, add to it, move it over to WordPress.org if you want to, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the, that's the gist of what we're going to do next. Um, and just before we take the break, because um, we can come back after the break, or you can keep going right now if you want to, I'm just going to give you some, some basic best practices. Um, so first of all, decide what you need. So you know, there's a tendency sometimes for people just to jump right in and start like creating pages and sort of playing around with things. And that's fine. And that's a good way to learn what, you've, what, what the tools are. But it's helpful to know what, ex what exactly you want to use the site for. So is this a place to show five of your best stories, two of your best videos, and your resume? Or is this a site where you're going to post regularly? It's going to be your blog site. It's going to be where your new content lives. Um, is this a site where um, you're going to be specifically focusing on your side interests, and it won't include stuff about your primary? You know, so having a sense of and a clearly articulated and defined strategy of what this is and what this is about is, is very important and helpful. And you can change that, but it's good to at least have something that you're using as your working premise. Um, you've gathered your materials, most of you, which is great. Um, so that means when you're starting to add posts, you don't have to think about your bio. You've already got it, so you can just drop it in there. Same with your pictures and other materials. These are the kinds of things you typically will want, and these are the things I think many of you probably have. Um, if you have some of them and not others, that's fine. You can always add stuff later. Um, but these are the kinds of things that tend to make for good material on your site. Right? These are things that help distinguish you, that show people who you are, what you're about. If I come to your site and I see this stuff, I have a pretty good sense of who you are. So I know that, um, Jen, right? you're Boston Globe. You write about education or something, right? Retail. Retail, OK. So, I, I see a couple of your stories. I see your photo. I see you know, a bio of you quickly. I see a couple of video appearances you've made on TV, et cetera, whatever, if it may be video you've shot. Um, see your contact information. Um, and if, if you want to, if you have other stuff that you think is useful or relevant, there's other stuff you can add there as well. But it's essentially a, a, a quick overview of you. So when I see you, I'm like, oh, OK, I get who that is. I get a sense of what, they, what they're about. Um, this is something we'll do. Um, also, um, this afternoon, as you're doing, as you're working through individually, I'll also sh um, put up some sites, and I'll point you to some of the resources in the handout where you can look at some on your own machines. Very helpful to see professional portfolios, and we've got some that are specifically journalists, so you can see what other people are doing for inspiration. Um, you'll want to choose a reliable web host, assuming you're using WordPress.org. Some of you may be fine with WordPress.com, um, or for that matter, some of you may end up staying with Flavors or one of the others, and that's fine too. But for those of you who are using WordPress.org eventually, you'll want to pick a reliable host um, because this is really your professional presence, right? So you want to pick a place that you can rely on. Um, and typically, just FYI, these are anywhere from $6 a month to $8 a month to $12 a month. It shouldn't be more than that um, unless you're hosting a huge amount of content and getting you know, hundreds of thousands of visitors. You shouldn't have to pay more than $10 or $12. Um, I think mine is 8 a month, if I'm not mistaken. Um, through Bluehost, you'll see the deals that they offer. You know, they offer different packages, but essentially that's what it generally amounts to. Shouldn't be more than hundred dollars a year, but that should, to me, that's a worthwhile investment for having a professional presence online. Um, theme options are varied. Um, there are lots of free themes. The best way to find them is just to search. So great journalist portfolio themes or best 100 themes of 2011, things like that, will get you great lists, and you can see visually what they look like. People, there are lots of different bloggers who have aggregated them into one post. So you can just look at the post of 100 best themes of 2010, and you'll see one after the other. But you can also go to these companies. So these are actually three that I recommend that have nice, nicely designed professional themes that work well for portfolio sites. And then this is another one which has, um, this is a bit.ly site that actually points you to some other um, theme options that might also be useful. Does bit.ly still exist? Or did they bit.ly do does exist, yes. But is it still bit.ly? Yes, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. And um, one just piece of side advice, you know, there, there are lots of deals and promotions on these things. 
Um, I would pick the one that you feel most reliable, you feel most comfortable with, because you don't want to save a dollar or two on hosting. This is your professional presence, and it's not worth um, nickel and diming it if, if, if it's going to make a big difference. Um, if you get commissioned to write a story or do a project that's thousands and thousands of dollars, that's a lot more important than if you save a dollar or two on, on a monthly hosting fee. Um, and I personally have used, as I mentioned earlier, Bluehost, but there are other people that have used other services like DreamHost and GoDaddy, which have also um, they've been happy with. I've, as I mentioned, liked the fact that I can call Bluehost and they have a reliable phone service. People know what they're talking about when you call them. I haven't personally tried uh, that process with DreamHost or GoDaddy, but I'm assuming that those are also viable options, and there are others as well. Um, so these are some of the widgets that I showed you. Um, you want to start adding them just so your, your site has more than just a blank page created in the background. You want to start having some content that's updated. Um, and typically, most of us will have some other content, whether it's from Flickr or Twitter or elsewhere. And you can use that to, to kind of populate the site, right? Because you're already producing that content anyway. So you might as well be using that to strengthen your site. Here are some plugins that are useful. There are lots and lots of others. You can actually, I showed you issue. Um, the embed for issue, but you can also use um, a plugin for issue for a WordPress site. So that gallery that I showed you earlier, um, if I wanted to include that gallery on my WordPress site, I could embed it using the issue plugin. Um, and you know, keep keep uh, keep up to date on your site. I'm always I'm not always the best at that. This is something where this is a helpful practice to get in the, the habit of checking in and improving things and updating things and adding things. Yeah. Sure, a Kismet is um, is basically a spam gatherer. So it, it kind of when when spammers send spam comments to your site, and generally they're kind of funny. They're always like, "Your blog post is very interesting. I find it very interesting. I like reading your blog post. Please continue writing your blog post." Like it's kind of junk and garbledygook that doesn't mean anything, but it's also not like, you know, the profane or disgusting things you get in your email. It's sort of bland, and that's why I think sometimes people think it'll get through. Um, but a kismet uh, will sort of filter that out and mark it as spam so, it, so that you can um, make sure it doesn't show up on your comments. Um, and there's fantastic array of resources for getting help on this stuff. Um, I mean, there's help on basically anything you want to learn online. And that's something a lot of people don't realize. They think they need to go to, um, to uh, experts to find stuff out. But you can actually find stuff out on most any topic, technical topic you want to or any social media topic. There's tons and tons of great resources online. And for, with WordPress, that's especially true. So there's a whole website, WordPress.tv, which has fantastic resources, video lessons, et cetera, about any specific part of WordPress you want to learn about. Um, and WordPress.org also has lots of documentation, which will be enormously helpful as you're moving along. Um, and you can ask questions. There are boards you can post to if you have questions. It's, um, it's a very lively and helpful community. So make sure to capitalize on that as you're, as you're developing your site. Um, so um, let's, let's pause there. Um, and um, let me just point you to one resource, because after the break, we're going to come back and do the hands-on. So I'm going to just show you what this bit.ly site that I mentioned earlier, what this looks like, um, because you may want to look at some of the examples that I have on there as you're looking for inspiration. So you know, we talked about the instant portfolio sites. If you want to see some more of those, there are examples here. Um, and um, there are examples of these other kinds of sites as well, if you want to see some of those. Um, but what I want to direct your attention primarily to, because we're focused now on WordPress, is um, these resources. So here are seven well-designed journalism portfolios, another uh, collection of, of journalism portfolio sites. Um, here are specifically some portfolio themes for journalists. Um, so if you want to see what some themes that have been collected and, and people have noted as particularly good for journalists to use, um, this is a link for that. Um, here's some portfolios that specialize in multimedia. Um, a colleague of mine, Daniel, um, selected a few others as well, specifically journalists who are using WordPress. So you can take a look at some of these. Um, and, um, and then here are some unconventional ones and some interesting and innovative designs if you want some out-of-the-box inspiration, if you want a sort of unusual kind of a site. So I'd encourage you to explore those. If not today, you can explore them on your own time later. Um, and um, you'll see the kinds of ways that people have designed their professional sites. And that may be helpful for you as you're thinking through what you want your site to look like. It's bit.ly slash launch your site. And actually, it's, it's on the handout. Um, and the handout actually includes the same content, at least as of this moment. right? I call it a digital handout because this is just a snapshot of what the digital content is, which changes as I add things. 
fix it, change it, add to it. Um, but this is a snapshot of it. So, but unfortunately, because it's paper, you can't click on the links. Um, but, but, but in any case, you can see the URL here, so you can refer back to it later on, on your own machine if you want to. Any, any questions before we take our break? Yes. Sure. And really, these are just a, uh, you know, a starting point. There, there are lots and lots of others that you could equally well. Um, this is in, yeah, this is one of the, so I gave you a handout of the slides. So this is in that, in, toward, the, uh, toward, the, uh, toward the back of the slide handout. Um, so in this handout, which has all the slides I just showed to you, um, the second to last one, or the third to last one, I guess, will have the useful plugins. And um, one other resource that I gave to you, which I did not write myself, but I thought would be useful, I selected it, I curated it, um, is this WordPress in a Day tutorial. And it's not brand new, but I found the explanations kind of good and straightforward. So I thought it was fine. And, and it will help you if you need a little bit more guidance along, you know, what is a page or, you know, things we've talked about, but you want a little more guidance. This will be um, hopefully helpful for that. So as, you're, as we're doing the hands-on section, don't hesitate to refer to this as if, if it's helpful.